Nearly every state in the country gives its governor some form of a line item veto power, where they effectively get to take a red editor's pen to bills, crossing out certain aspects they don't like, and then sign the rest of the bill into law. Notably, that authority is not granted to the president of the United States. The Supreme Court struck down a federal line item veto back in 1998. Despite Bill Clinton being president at the time, the federal line item veto is actually the brainchild of House Republicans, who saw it as a useful tool to rein in federal spending. During his successful campaign for governor, Wisconsin Republican Scott Walker effectively said as much the same. I have a line item veto just as powerful as the governor, no, as the county executive. That's one of the few things that county executives have that are different than anybody else. I use that, I mean, simple to me, uh, uh, economics 101, government 101 is you use the line out of veto to eliminate or lower the cost of something in the budget. All right. You use the line out of veto to eliminate or lower the cost of something in the budget. Well, in the last few days, two Democratic governors dealing with hostile Republican legislatures have managed to use the line out of veto to score some pretty amazing political victories. So in Wisconsin, Democratic Governor Tony Evers is facing one of the most aggressively gerrymandered legislatures in the country. So Governor Evers had to get clever in order to fight for his priorities. Now, Wisconsin governors used to have an even more expansive line item veto power than they do now. Quote, at one time, governors could veto individual words to create new individual letters to create new words known as the Vanna White veto or strike words from two or more sentences to make new sentences known as the Frankenstein veto. Wisconsin governors cannot strike individual words and letters from bills anymore, probably for the best. There's nothing saying they can't fool around with numbers. The governor also using his authority to ensure increased funding for public schools for the next 400 years unless changed by a future legislature and governor. The governor's move increasing each year how much revenue schools can raise. Yes, that's right. Governor Evers extended school funding in Wisconsin in by more than 400 years using the line item video. You see the legislature approved a funding in a boost in funding through the 2024-25 school year. The governor took his handy veto pen, crossed out the 20 along with a hyphen, changing 2024 hyphen 25 to 2425. So additional funding through the year 2425 will now be the law of the land in Wisconsin until someone comes along to change it. In Pennsylvania, Democratic Governor Josh Shapiro also got creative with his veto power. Shapiro negotiated an expansion of, again, public school funding, but he also had to whip votes for a controversial compromise that would subsidize private schools with voucher programs in order to pass the bill through the Republican-controlled Senate, which it did last week. And before it passed the Democratic House last night, Shapiro announced... He's going to use the line item veto on the school voucher program he helped negotiate and got it through the Senate after he used it as bait to get Republicans on board with his budget. All this brings me back to two major points. One, I think the case against the line item veto is pretty strong. I, I, I'm still a little unsold. It's the best thing. Going forward, probably find some bipartisan consensus to getting rid of it or at least, you know, reining it in in some ways. But point number two, and this is the most important thing for Evers, Shapiro, when you are elected to office of either party, but in this case of Democrats, you've got to wield the power you have on things you believe in and that you promise to deliver. And in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, we got two pretty good examples of that.